Welcome back to the 2023 Chase series. Last time we checked out Illinois' first insane asylum, and later that day we stumbled across another abandoned asylum in a nearby town purely by chance. And that is what this video is going to be about. This institute actually has a tie to Jacksonville where the first insane asylum was in Illinois. The first iteration of this place was started in Jacksonville in 1865 as the experimental school for idiots and feeble-minded children, which was a sort of extension to the Illinois Institution for the Deaf and Dumb. It was designed to teach children who were moderately or mildly retarded but not epileptic, insane, or greatly deformed. In 1877, it found its new home on a 40-acre plot in Lincoln as the Illinois Asylum for Feeble-Minded Children. It was renamed the Lincoln State School in 1954 and finally changed to the Lincoln Developmental Center in 1975. In 2000, there were 698 employees and 383 residents, but just two years later, the governor decided to shut it down after reports of abuse, neglect, and preventable deaths. So they have one of these giant things. Okay, so wow, look at that. And look, there's like modern trailers on the property yeah. in a modern building, Maybe but it looks abandoned. Look at there's, there's old, Maybe go here. Down. Wow. This, yeah, I think they are. That. Look, what does that wow. sign say? Oh my gosh. Visitors information. Oh, visitors information. Wow. Yeah. Look at that old yeah. street light is like crooked it's on collapsed. its side. These, these are where they, I'm where they lived. Wow. This is where the feeble-minded children lived. Pipes. Wow. Stairs. See, this one I feel like isn't as... Elmhurst wow, Cottage. look at that thing back there. There's like a greenhouse. Wow, Elmhurst Cottage. Hey, look through the window there. Oh my gosh. You could straight up crawl through these windows. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I wouldn't want to get cut, but this is like where a kid lived. Look at, look, they still have, look at these curtains. I know. Wow. Wow. Yeah, is this room meant for like, it's so tiny though. The Commitment Act of 1915 gave responsibility for admissions to the courts rather than the superintendent, which could commit anyone who was feeble-minded but not insane. Because of this change in admissions, there was a large influx of residents, including juvenile delinquents who were sent there instead of the reformatories, which were becoming overcrowded. The courts justified this by calling them criminal morons. The facility was way overcrowded, way understaffed, and unhygienic. And a number of residents had nothing wrong with them other than the misfortune of being poor. And sometimes entire families resided there when the almhouses closed down. Wilbur, there's another loading dock. Oh yeah, there's another loading dock. What did they load? Yeah, look, it says Food, Wilbur. provisions, I don't know. Look at that. Look at that. I bet you there's a way in back there. Yeah. Look, and then these are probably where like the admins lived or something, yeah. don't you think? Yeah. Wanna get out and walk? Uh, yeah. Let's see it's Look, a, there's another light lamp pole laying in the grass. Over. Yeah, but park around the back so people don't see our car. Park like around the back side. Look, I bet you that you could probably try these handles. There this place is not oh wow, they had a gazebo. Okay. This place is not nearly as wow. Dang. Oh this is my extensive. gosh, yeah. But it's not nearly as locked up as the yeah. Wheeler Cottage. Other place. Look at that. Somebody tried to get in there. Yeah, Wheeler Cottage. This is so crazy. Of one of these. I would love to get inside one. I wanna go like where the residents hey, live. 
there's kind of like an eerie stillness in the air out here. Yeah, it is. Like, it can't be imagined out here during the thunderstorm. The Caldwell Cottage. I feel like we could try one of these doors and just see, don't you think? Yeah. Oh my gosh, they have a cemetery. Is that part of this or is that different? Whoa. So this closed down 21 years ago. It's just been sitting here, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it smells like total mildew mold. At its peak, it was like a little city with its own power plant, kitchen, bakery, hospital, nursing school, greenhouses, fire department, and jail. There's even underground tunnels to every building to provide access for the steam pipes. Throughout its existence, residents worked making mattresses, shoes, brooms, caring for other residents, maintaining the campus, doing laundry, and cleaning the buildings. Some residents were even permitted to work off campus. A 1973 Supreme Court decision put an end to that work when it was decreed that working residents had to be paid the same as regular employees. This negatively affected a lot of the residents who found their identity in the work they did. Here's a story about one of the residents in the 1930s, a boy named Lee Turner Jones, who died at the age of eight. His mom had him when she was 14 and she couldn't care for him, so he was sent to the asylum, but not as a baby, as a six-year-old. It's not clear why he was even sent there at the age of six, but just over a year after he arrived, he died. His death certificate said he was an inmate at the center. That was a common term used back then. And he was classified as an infantile imbecile. There really may not have been anything wrong with him and that could have just been written down as an easy way to get him admitted. Although there was no autopsy performed, his cause of death was listed as diarrhea and enteritis. It's safe to assume this was because of the unsanitary conditions there. One resident who was committed to the institution in 1932 explained how she had been living there for a handful of decades at that point because she was caught shoplifting from a grocery store, given a test, and based on the test, sent to the Lincoln Center. Another story from the facility was recounted by a local Lincoln resident. He used to go there with his father as a boy in the 1950s to collect trash from the food services facility so they could feed their hogs. Some of the residents would help them with the garbage and nothing really appeared to be wrong with them. His father had a theory that most of them were just normal kids who were born illegitimately and dumped off by their parents. When he was in eighth grade though, his class put on a Christmas pageant for the facility and that's when he saw the full scope of the residents. According to him, it was the first time he saw people with severe physical abnormalities, microcephalix, hydrocephalix, Down syndrome, and some dramatically disfigured people. It left a deep impression on him. City building facility, oh, Co Cody building. Cody building facility. Facility administration, so this is the another. Uh... Oh, that door's open. Dare we? Well, we could. Let's go. I, I feel like it this is not going to be as interesting as that. It's not, but so. what if we found like old desks and stuff in there? Right. Look at this old equipment. Oh, this ain't going nowhere. Look. Oh, gosh dang it. Darn. Darn. It stinks like mildew in there, too, Easy. huh? Okay. That was a dead end, but these are open windows over here. So it looks like there's a kitchen in there. We see like hoods, like oven hoods. Uh, look at this door. Yeah. Shit, dad, what just, oh my gosh. I felt like a dirty bat touched you or something. Look, look at this. Okay, it smells. Look, there's, there's a, a there's a <laughs> look, there's smell. a drinking fountain up there. Oh my gosh. Does it smell in here? You could go inside up there, but oh my gosh. Well, I'm just gonna walk around to here. Look, look, don't these little like look old? They're like green. Look at all their like financial papers. 
accounting information. 2000. 2000. They just left it here. So there's the dead mm -hmm. cards. There's, oh my gosh. I know, I just want to get a better. It's very dirty. I want to get out of here. There was, of course, staff and volunteers who cared deeply about the residents and advocated for them. Residents were able to learn skills and partake in activities like movie screenings, the annual Maypole celebration, the school band, and programs like foster grandparents, where a person who was over the age of 60 became like a grandparent to one or more of the kids there. In 2021, the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice proposed part of the property be repurposed as housing for children who committed a crime to teach them better behavior in order to become productive citizens of society. The timeline for this project was two years, but it looked totally abandoned when we were driving around. What? Okay. Maybe this was their little fire station or something with the rink a dink door. Whoa, look at, yeah, look at the decorative wood. And look at this snow plow. Not interesting. No. Oh god, it smells. Yeah, it's creepy when like all the paper comes off the walls. Ew. I dare you to spend the night in this Illinois asylum. Uh, <laughs> Look, they have like tons of plants growing in the gutters. And of course the knockdown poles again. And then this one has like a fancy Entrance, yeah, and they all have those like school vents on the top, yeah. This is done by the wind, yeah. I know it's the natural. vents are swirling. Oh, there's a TV right there, too. That's where all the smash TVs probably were. spewing out all sorts of humid, musty air. Gross. Oh, what's that door? Does it look like it's um, like it has a window that we can look into. Oh no, it's boarded up. Dang. Look at that door though. Do you think that door can open? The doors don't look closed tight. I don't know. Fine. No. It's not like a window you can look at if you want. Oh my gosh, it's a chalkboard. Erected, okay, so this is 1929. Wow, what is that thing back there? So this is like some weird, I don't know, it looks like a greenhouse there or something. Oh, you can go over to it. Her visit got cut short because a security guard or cop, something with flashing lights on the car, started heading in our direction. So of course we hightailed it out of there. Oh my gosh, I just had a sprint. Dad was like, get in the car, there's security coming. Yeah, okay. Oh, he had lights going? Okay, get out of here. Get on the freeway. We went back there several days later after we had picked up Katrina just to investigate it a little bit again. But we didn't spend too much time because we were on high alert for security slash cops. We returned to the, uh... oh my gosh. Okay, it really 
stinks. That reeked like mildew mold. You could smell it. You could smell it before you even walked into it. I'm not. Speaking of Katrina, in the next episode, we pick up Kat from Chicago and introduce her to the world of chasing, complete with her first chase day and some abandoned places. So hit subscribe and the notify bell so you know when that comes out. See you next time.